Hi, uh, my name is Jablan Chitanga. So I'm recording this. I will try to make it very short video because can I use the word most? Most of the students um, struggle with the manual calculations for dependent sample t test. There's another one that I'm going to record as well for independent sample t test. So this one is whereby um, uh, a single sample is used in a study so we want to check if there's a significant difference. So mostly researchers test before and after an intervention. Uh, for example, we can test uh, anxiety level before statistics class, and then we can test anxiety level after on the same class. So we can select 10, eight, five students and test them before and after. So that is when dependent sample status is used. It is also referred to as a repeated measure sample test because it is from a repeated measure design. But I want to focus on the calculations more than anything else, um, especially those that need to do that in assessments. Um, so you can see mostly in assessments, you, the question asks you to test for hypotheses. So when you are faced with such, with such a question, you should follow the steps um, for hypothesis testing, but depends on the textbook. Some have a lot of steps, but all the steps, they include these main four. Ignore the last one. This last one is run when you're asked to do a search on when you find a significant difference. So you should be able to state the hypothesis. So the now hypothesis and alternative hypothesis, you can read around that. And then step number two, you should be able to locate the critical region. So using the degrees of freedom, the significant level that is provided to you and the direction. So the direction you're not told, but the way that the question is asked, you will be able to know, for example, like can you test if there's a significant um, difference? So that is too tailed because there's no direction that is specified. But when, when the question asks you to, like for example, let's say uh, the, 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 the level of anxiety is likely to decrease after or is likely to increase after. So, so when that is specified, that is one tailed. So that comes into effect when you state the hypothesis and also when you, you make use of um, uh, the T distribution table. I'm going to show you at the end of this um, video, what does it look like? But I want to focus on, on, on this step number three where you do the calculations. Is it calculations or computations? I can't pronounce the word calculations, excuse me. And then now you compare the, the obtained T and, and the critical um, value or the region. So you will be able to reject or fail to reject the hypothesis using that and conclude otherwise. So every time you obtain a significant difference, you proceed to calculate the effect size. So there are two ways and forms. Is it ways or forms? So we can use the estimated coins D or you can use the eta squared. But let us get into... Uh, the formula for, for t-test, um, repeated measure or one sample or paired sample. Um, so this is the formula. So this is just for mean difference. So the mean, the difference for, for the before and after. And then this is the one that you state in your now hypothesis that there's no difference. So this is the population mean. Remember we are, we collect data from a sample but our intention is to understand the population. So that is why it's given like this. Um, and this is estimated standard error. So we are going. To, I'm going to show you how to obtain this. This is going to be zero because say there's no difference. So so this one is the mean. You're going to calculate it, and then this one is zero. And then we are also going to calculate the estimated standard error. It's like almost like standard deviation. So the formula for that is is this. So it's variance divided by the number of the sample size in a square root. But we cannot do this before we, we calculate the variance. So for us to calculate the variance, we need the SS, the sum of squares, and divided by the degrees of freedom. And then also we cannot do that before we calculate the SS. So I'm going to show you how to do it that as such. But let me just show you the formula for SS before I move forward. Um, which color am I using? So and if you remember from variability, we did this calculation, the computational formula for search, sum of x, 
squared. So this is the sum of squared x and this sum of x squared divided by n. But for, for t test, for dependency of t test, we replace this with d. We are going to focus on the difference, not the actual, actual uh, row scores. So please bear that in mind. So the, the data is given mostly in this way in format. Uh, sometimes in a, in a vertical, <laughs> so all of the students ask me like, but you told me the data comes like this, but the data was really like, like eight, uh, five, excuse my writing, three, two, two. So that was for before and for after the data was given like the scores were given like this. So it doesn't make a difference. What you need to do is just to arrange them in this way and manner, you get that. So let us move forward. Um, so what you do, what is the easiest way of, of doing that? You, you sketch, um, it, is it a table of four columns? One, two, three, four columns. So what we are doing is going to help us um, come up with these values that we're looking for. So now, for example, what you do, we need the difference between these two, but it is standard that you, you subtract the first one from the second, x1, x2, so nine minus eight. Although it is not a problem to, to subtract otherwise because the focus is on, is on the difference. So let us do that. Uh, let me take my pen again. Um, so the difference nine minus eight, that is one. Seven minus five, that is two. Two minus um, three, that is minus one. F seven minus five, that is two, correct. And then two minus, no, nine minus two, that's seven, okay. So, so we can have the total of the difference here. We're going to come back to that, but let us proceed. This is the difference that is squared. So this is for difference. The D is for differences, okay. just in case, but I don't want to write it now. And then because of time, and then one times one, that is one, two times two, that is four. One minus one times minus one is a positive one, okay. And then two times two, that is four. Again, seven times seven, that is 49. Okay, are we together? And let me just have um, the sum of, let me add this. So one plus two, that's three. Three minus one, that's two. Two plus two, that's four. Four plus seven, that's 11. So this is the sum of, of D. Oh, excuse my writing, I'm left-handed, but I use my right hand to move the case sum. And then now we add 49 plus four plus one plus eight, that is 59. You're going to see how it's going to help us uh, in the calculations. So now the, the mean for the difference, remember we need this, we need the mean for the differences. So we, it means the sum divided by the number of scores, one, two, three, four, five. So 11 divided by five. So that is the mean. So, so the mean for the difference is, so 11 divided by, by five. So the answer is 2.2. 2.20, let me just stick to two decimal places, 2.20. So that is the mean. So we are sorted actually. Let me write it here, 2.20 minus zero. So the numerator of the formula is sorted. So excuse my zero, I write zero the other way around. This is a zero. So now we move on to, to the denominator. Like what I've just said, we need to, calculate or compute the SS first of which the formula for that is sum of D squared, um, sum of squared D squared, yeah, something like that, uh, minus the sum of D squared. So the D is the, the, are the differences, okay? And then divide by N, of which we have those scores. This is the sum of, squared is like 59. 59 is the sum. See, we added all this, the scores that are, uh, the differences that are squared. So it's 59. Uh, minus sum of D, that is 11, is it? Sum of D. So 11 
and then we are going to square that 11. Divide by the number of scores in that distribution, that is five. So if you proceed, uh, so 11 times 11 by, by five from nine, so you're going to get 34 point, um, I don't have a calculator here for now, let me just check. Okay, 34.8. There's a point here, 34.8. So now we are sorted with this, but now because the variance, the, the formula for variance is that S is that we've obtained divided by the degrees of freedom. By the way, degrees of freedom is N minus one for, for dependent sample stick test, it's N minus one. So that is the degrees of freedom, just in case. So it means one, two, three, four, five. So four, so it means 34.8, divide by four. So the answer is 8.7. So now we have 8.7. So we are moving forward and ahead nicely. So the answer is 8.7. Let me, let me just write point zero here. Divided by the, the, the number of participants, like one, two, three, four, five. And then in a square root. So that is the estimated standard error. So when we when do like that, if we divide 8.70 divided by five in the square root of such, we get 1.32. So now here, this is the one point. Three, two. Okay. And then if you, so 2.20 minus zero, that's 2.20. So 2.20 divided by 1.32. So T is equal to 1.67. So our T, let me write here so that you can see. One point, excuse my writing. I need a point here. Okay, that is, T, um, and, and I hope and believe uh, I've managed to uh, help. So that's what it, so the first thing that you need to do, step number one, so no, step number one is the, the differences, and then you square the differences, and then you find the sum of the differences, and you find the sum of the squared differences, and then you calculate the mean as well, because we need that for our formula. And then you for, you come up, you, you calculate or compute the SS, sum of squares. And then why are we doing that? Because the formula for variance, you need that. And then we need the degrees of freedom, N minus one, that is four. And then you proceed to calculate the estimated standard error. And then this is not a final T value, but we use that to complete our whole formula for T. So that is, this is our T value. But what, what are we doing with this T? If the question asks us to make a decision if this difference is significant or not, uh, let me just show you. Um, so, so for our question, like it's too tailed, let, let us assume that because we just want to check if there's a significant difference. So it's too tailed. We, we did not say, uh, the, the anxiety level is going to increase or decrease after um, uh, at the end of the module class. So it's two tailed. And then like what I told you uh, some minutes ago that uh, I'm trying to check, I'm trying to change the color for the annotation here. Uh, which one must I take? Green. Um, so you see that degrees of freedom here, that degrees of freedom uh, return here. So in the degrees of freedom for, for for, for the dependent symbols to test is n minus one, n minus one. So it's five minus one. So the degrees of freedom is four. And then we are using the significant level of 0 0.05. Uh, if, if, it, if you are given 0 0.01, make use of that. But this is what is mostly used, 0 0.05. And you can see this is one tail, you don't need that we need to make use of the two-tailed because it's, it's not directional or hypothesis testing. So this is 0 0.50, we don't need this. 0 0.20, 0 0.10, we need 0 
this one, 0 0.05. And then our degrees of freedom is four. So we're the mid, so the answer is, is 2.776. 2.776. So, so it, what actually it means, if you want to make a decision, uh, you, can re, you can reject the null hypothesis when the obtained T in the, in the, in the, falls in the extreme, in the critical region. So it means our critical region is starting from 2.7. Seven, six, this is a positive, it's a two-tailed. It can be a negative, it doesn't matter. 2.7, seven, six, like this. Uh, let's show you, no, this is a point. Excuse my, my cursor. So this is a point. But now we've obtained, uh, so if, if a value falls, if it is greater than 2.776, you reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there's a significant uh, difference. But now we have obtained 1.674 somewhere here. So this is zero. It falls somewhere here. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there's no significant difference before and after uh, the statistics class. Okay. That's that, um, the rest, you can follow the effect size. Uh, you can do that on your own, um, it's quite easy. You can use the coins, estimated coins D or the eta squared. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I have helped um, understand statistics not easy. And most people are anxious, especially towards and when we want to write exams uh, or assessments, people struggle with that. Thank you so much.